let's make up a complicated problem. Okay, just out of the blue, let's try the problem. Let's include a spring in the problem. Let's include gravity. And let's also include motion. Okay, and let's make up a problem. Let's say the problem looks like this. We've got a frictionless table that has a spring on it. And that spring is compressed a distance x from its equilibrium. And then we're going to launch this thing off the table. And it's going to go to the ground. And we want to figure out what is Vf for that box when it hits the ground. And we will tell you that this is height h. And the box is a mass m. All right, and let's say that this is frictionless. There's no friction on the table here. All right, how do we do it? I'll give you a hint. It's the title of this chapter that we're working on. Okay. Andrew seems to think that only the height matters here. I'm not sure I totally agree with that, right? Because we've compressed the spring in this sort of dart gun configuration. It seems like that's going to matter too. Would you agree? No. Seems like most of your velocity is going to be from your height. Okay. Well, let's try it and find out. What sort of principle do we want to use here? I'll give you a hint. Conservation of energy. <laughs> Conservation of energy, right? And again, all this says is whatever energy we have initially has to be equal to whatever energy we have finally. Finally meaning just before it hits the ground. So what sort of energy do we have initially? Well, Andrew said that we have potential energy. Absolutely. Is there any other energy that we have initially? Yes, because we've compressed the spring. And so we have to include that right here. Okay. And now we're going to launch it. So this is before launch. And now we launch it, and it falls to the ground. This can be our final position here. Final position is all kinetic energy. It's down at height zero, spring is gone, and so this is all we have on the right side of our equation. And now we can solve this for Vf. All right, let's rewrite it. One half m Vf squared equals mgh plus one half kx squared. I can multiply everything by two. I can divide by m. And I get Vf is equal to 2gh plus k over m x squared. And then I take the square root of that whole thing. So if there was no compression of the spring, then this term goes away. Everything is due to the height. And we know when things fall from a height, they hit the ground at square root of 2gh. But if we have some compression of the spring, we have to include that term in there. Now, obviously, if it's really, really high, then this term will dominate. But if it's kind of low and you compress the spring a lot, then this term will dominate. And so there's a balance between those two. But the nice thing here is you can choose any initial position and any final position you want. You don't have to worry about the intermediate steps. We didn't have to worry about what was the speed of the block here when it left the table. We didn't have to worry about the speed of the block anywhere along the way. We only had to worry about the final position and when it was still at rest against the spring. Okay. Thank you guys.